Uh, so, so first of all, who are you? Okay, so I'm Marco Tempest. I'm a cyber illusionist, which means I combine magic and science to create illusions. And this is my New York City magic lab where I kind of develop all my stuff. Like so, here for example, and I'm, I, I, I'm, I came here because yeah. <laughs> I saw you on the TED video and I loved what you did. I was like, wow, that is so cool. Oh, thank you very much. So here is a, a Kinect thing, and actually, let me let me show you how this looks here. like. So everybody is doing oh. uh, is doing stuff with the Kinect. Yeah. And now it actually grabbed uh, it grabbed your skeleton. Yeah. So if you wanna if you wanna step in the in the screen, so this is attaching particles to your uh, to your hands. Oh, this wow. is for uh, so if, if you move your hands around like like a superhero. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Perfect. So this is uh, it's something I'm working on. It's going to be a piece about storytelling and magic. And so I'm going to be in this virtual environment and stuff appears and disappears around me. And this is kind of a proof of concept. So here we see um, yourself. Uh, okay. So here we see the, the depth image, then the RGB image, the cutout version of the of the person, which then gets keyed on, and then the the skeleton tracking, which now just became active, which creates the particles. So this is just kind of a a preview of, of, of what things might be in a couple of months from now. So when you say you're a cyber illusionist, for people who haven't seen the TED video, uh -huh. you played with, I think, three I iPhones. Right. And you did all sorts of magic tricks on the iPhones. And right, and I, ca I can probably set that up for you really quick. It takes a few a few minutes to start up. So I do, I use iPods and I use uh, video projection and I use uh, augmented reality, which I can show you in just a moment as well. Yeah. And uh, what I try to do is I try to come up with, uh, with my own tools. So I collaborate with people mostly out of the open source community. And we create all these tools and some of them I make available for other artists. So they can start a little later in the process and kind of get to the poetry faster. And it looks like you've been into traditional magic as well, right? Right. This is actually from some, some Japanese TV show where a card in a movie theater appeared in all the movie posters. So it's, it's a little bit... Corny, but <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of a into, ghost from the past. What so, got you into magic? Uh, I started at a super early age, and then, then in the mid '90s or so, I started. I had this idea of using a computer to do magic and interact with a computer. And I was very fortunate. It was the time where Steve Jobs actually uh, founded Next Computers. Yeah. So I made the next wave of magic, and they they gave me a box, a Next Cube. And uh, I started creating stuff and I realized, oh, there's, there's not even video playback on computers. Back then there was no QuickTime and nothing. So I had an X-Cube on stage with a screen and a VHS tape player behind it, which kind of mimicked interaction and touch screens and things like that. And since then, kind of technology has evolved and, and with it, I try to evolve with it. And, uh, and now here we are with touch screens and uh, voice recognition and pattern recognition and face tracking and so I use all these fun things in my work. What is magic? Magic is, uh, well, you could say it's the willing suspension of this belief. So you need an audience who's willing to kind of dive in into that sense of wonder and believe what they see and take it with a smile and maybe not too much uh, question what's going on in front of them so it's kind of it's an interactive thing it needs an audience willing and uh, a guy who's nice enough not <laughs> to, to, to show it to them yeah and uh, do you reveal your secrets or sometimes <laughs> I do like with these technological stuff because most magicians uh, don't right that's sort of a code of ethics right yeah yeah, yeah the, the yeah. code of ethics uh, I, absolutely and I think what, 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 what's happening now is a uh, and I experiment a lot with YouTube. It's like where maybe for the past like 60 years or so, it was like the content which was really important. You just had like something, you produced it or overproduced it, put it, put it on TV and that was fine for your audience. I think right now it's much more contextual. So what you put up there is more a conversation starter. So I put something up and they say, hey, how do you guys like it? And then of course people will reveal the magic because they can rewind the video as many times as they want or they can comment and talk to each other. But I think that's that's somewhat fine. It's like the if my content can start a conversation, then that's already much, much better than just, hey, look at me how cool I am or something of that sort, which is kind of the old model. Yeah. I always assumed that magicians uh, were hackers 
but hackers of our uh, pattern recognize, uh, recognizing system. Our brains are pattern recognition systems, right? We can look at a tree and instantly know it's a tree. The computer has to look at that for several minutes before it really knows it's a right. tree. Right, I say, yeah, it's like, I say Edward de Bono argues that our brains are just pattern matching machines. And so the magician kind of leads people down a path and you know everything looks very similar and everything is very, very ordinary, but there's it's like a veneer of disguise which covers all these like magic things we do when things look very normal. So, so the laziness of the brain by looking at stuff and looking for similarities helps helps magicians a lot. Yeah. But I don't think there is you know like there's right now neuroscience and magic are like kind of have this marriage where magicians pretend to know everything about neuroscience and neuroscientists pretend to know everything about magic. I don't, I don't think neuroscience is all that far yet and I don't think magicians really scientifically know what they're doing. It's, it c comes out of experience and well, kind here, of... Well, here's one example. I, I heard that if your eye is moving from point A to point B, it actually is uh, blind. And that's why uh, magicians try to redirect your attention somewhere while they're doing a sleight of hand trick, right? Because they can do something with their hands, and you're, while your eye is moving from here to here, it's it's a little bit blind, right? Yeah, absolutely. Is that, is that sort that, of there's something, trying? and there's also like something we call like uh, big movements cover little movements. So let's say I, I I have to do something, and I don't want you to see it. While I do this, I just move my hand in a bigger motion, and you know, and that mo the small movement will disappear. So. Bigger movements cover small movements. There's something called change blindness. There's some really cool videos online. There's this uh, psychologist in, in the UK, Richard Wiseman, which does all this stuff, I, like with the invisible gorilla and things changing around him. And so there's, there's, there's a lot of very cool psychological stuff out there for people who are interested. Yeah. A lot of magic today is performance. Right, because it's it's uh, you know entertain girls on stage, entertainment, music, uh, flame, fire, you know all the all the fun stuff that goes into a great performance, right? Right. Yeah, I think you know it's like at at, at the end of the day, it is show business, and um, I think now for magicians these days, it's kind of um, they have to resituate themselves and see who they want to be, because at the end of the day you really want to like this person on stage. So I don't know how likable to or mass appeal there is for a, for a guy wearing tails or for you know, a guy who has a wind machine and a smoke machine and stands there and hits strikes a pose or, or how... I think it's like the internet. Everything becomes more inclusive, more open, more close, so more normal. We, we stop dressing up and we dress down to, to, to reach our audience and engage them. So where, how do you start a magic trick? I mean, we've seen the TED video, so let's start with that. How did that start? And how did you get to the, the story that you told in that video? Well, in the, in the TED video, I, I made this piece of software which synchronizes videos across multiple screens of yeah. mobile devices. And maybe I can start this up really quick. So, yeah, that was uh, the most fascinating thing I've seen. So, well so the idea was that um, there's this piece of software which might help artists to to create stuff with videos because playing multiple screens is can be very expensive. So the easiest way to do it is have an iPod and connect it to a to a TV screen. So I created this piece of software. It's called Multivid. It's available for free at the App Store, and people can um, synchronize videos or use it for presentations. Yeah. And it does some some fancy stuff. It does like end endpoint behaviors in playlists so you can have loop things and stuff moves around so I wanted to show something I wanted to show how this could be used in a performance environment so let me start this up really quick so basically what it is is a it's there's an eye oh, yeah things? sure so there's a there's an, a, a controller which just uh, discovered these four devices one two three four and uh, I can now start video synchronized on all devices so they they pretend to be iPods now but actually this is a video frame and here's my little teleprompter which tells me what comes next and here's the smiley face which kind of tells me chill out have fun with it don't be nervous because this is kind of <laughs> there's a lot of stuff going on so I can start this and then it's it's basically it's not really set up with all the props but it's I can I can show the beginning it's yeah. a story about deception. 
So there's very little magic in it and, and it starts like this. I can say, well, one of my favorite magicians... Okay, let's do deception. One of my favorite magicians is uh, Carl Germain. He had this wonderful trick where a rose bush would bloom right in front of your eyes. But it was his production of a butterfly that was the most beautiful. And then here with a little bit of magic a real butterfly appears in the stage version. So here would be a butterfly which is now invisible. Now when he was asked about magic and magicians he said this. And so it continues on and yeah. on. So, um, so that was kind of an experiment on, on, on how to use this and actually to, to kind of go away from doing a big magic trick. So there are no iPods disappearing or swarms of butterflies. Or it's, it's really kind of about the layer of, of, of the story of talking about deception and what it means to people. And, you know, is lying good or bad? Is there a good way of lying? Or these kind of questions. So like a conversation starter. Yeah. And then, of course, I want to have it more technical, so now I made this touch screen thing where when I move the screens around on them, they look cooler, right? Oh, nice. so, um, so this is kind of uh, not really sure yet how this will look like, so it's just like playing around with, with visual quality, so this could be a really nice way to, to kind of accentuate and then maybe have graphics from below. And then maybe there's a projector which projects onto my hand. So yeah. there's a there's now the the TED video was just one video all the way through, and it it didn't react to your touch, or did um, it? It didn't react react to my touch. Yeah. Um, it did in the beginning, but then I was so concerned with like being a TED with like a gazillion uh, <laughs> Wi-Fi networks. So I was just worried that that I might have uh, communication problems. So I, I kept it simple and kind of mimed through the piece. Yeah. I can show you something which is very interactive in in uh, in. in but your hands are very fast. Uh, <laughs> uh, we watched it again last night, and um, and you were right on time. So that took some practice. Didn't yeah, it? I took a little bit of practice. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you this. So this is kind of the the op- hard work and magic that you don't see on stage, right? The, so this is kind of, of, hours of this practice. is kind of the opposite of a self-working system. So what this does is. Um, there's a, an infrared camera uh, on the floor there with a projector which can track this canvas. So the video image sticks on the canvas. You see there's a, yeah. there's a video image which moves around. Get and that. also have kind of a, a right false right on the screen. So yeah, I see. Yeah. And then uh, I can do things like, for example, I can draw on it. And then I can like explode whatever I draw into particles and have them go to somewhere happier. That's, <laughs> that's insane. And it's, it's a little, uh, and there's a, a drawing system as well, so I can, uh, I can draw something. You're going to ruin everybody's TED talk, that's what you're going to do. I forgot the floor. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, so this is kind of a digital storytelling tool. Hello. Hey. <laughs> Come over here. And then it, uh, it reacts to like uh, to to mo- movements and such. Hey, right. come over here. That is awesome. So this is kind of uh, it's very modular. Again, it has like a two D particle engine. You can load objects so they look like holograms and stick to the front when you move the canvas. And uh, and and you can you can draw not only uh, free but also into masks. So here's a little mask I can draw into. And then it has like the usual things which uh, magicians love to use. Okay, come over here. Now, how much of this is you knowing what's coming next, and how a, much of a it lot is of it is, is, is me knowing what's coming on, and then kind of okay, yeah. oh, now he, he wants he needs something to step on, so that's kind of my jump and run platform game. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the secret As here is I track in real time, so I can move this in real time, but then also there are these infrared LED tracking markers in the uh, in the back which are battery operated uh, a remote control some magnets so there's 
there's kind of the, the tools of a magician combined with a, with a little bit of science. You're going you're gonna to raise the bar for everybody's TED Talk. That's what you're doing. <laughs> Thank you. So we're going to see this at Le Web? Um, that's definitely going to be part of my, my talk at Le Web. And at Le Web, I also show a little bit on, on kind of how I deal with the audiences online, like my, my, my viewers, how I, how I manage my YouTube channel, and kind of the experiments I run online. And there's going to be other stuff. So there's some, going to be some augmented reality and some... Uh, and a little bit about creativity and uh, and how to how to get there and yep. not be overwhelmed. Very cool. Um, really neat. <laughs> Say. Really. Neat. And you got a stack of awards. What are all these awards over here? Oh, these are kind of some are from magicians. So this is. Uh, let me see. That's the World Magic Award for Best Contemporary Magician. That's the the Merlin Award. So magicians like to give awards. But then there's also, I, I, I dabble a little bit in, in television. I love graphics design, so I, I created my own television series and kind of sold it into 60 plus markets. So that's, that's a tally for, for graphic design. There's some for the music and some for the tricks. So these are not really all that hard to get. They're not Academy Awards. <laughs> 20 bucks on uh, eBay, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, congrats on all of What's this thing? Yeah, let me show you this. So this is a... I always wanted to do... A, let me get a fresh deck of cards. Um, I always wanted to do something where um, I could um, do something with playing cards and actually show audience members how it would be if they could have a glimpse into the mind of a, of a, of a magician when he does something as simple as a trick with playing cards. And the way I did this, uh, or tried to do this, is with this contraption. This is a super inexpensive PlayStation 3 camera. Yeah. So this project is, is very much designed so students can kind of do, do, some, it do, do, it, do it at home. So it uses some open source software like, uh, like the OpenCV, um, op uh, Intel, um, computer vision library. So this is how it works. So here is uh, the real-time view. Let's uh, pick a card and uh, let's mark it so we recognize it when we see it again. And I know you're uh, you're really big on Google Plus, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, put the card into the deck just like this. And uh, let's give the cards just a quick cut. All right, so for those who don't play cards, um, a deck of cards is made of four different suits. There's hearts, yeah. clubs, sound with this too? Not really. diamonds, and spades. So we have this like little augmentation of the cards, they get recognized. So performing magic is always about these multiple layers of reality combining. Now each of the each of the four suits corresponds to one of the four seasons. So there's spring, summer, fall, and winter. Now my favorite season is winter because winter is like magic, it involves visual wonder, drastic change, and the delicate balance between its physical states. Now in each of the four suits there's a total of 13 cards. And they represent the 13 lunar cycles. So let me see if I can get the lunar cycles going. Total fail, demo fail. <laughs> okay, that didn't work. You'll get it working by okay, the way, so right? Here is one I really, really love. These are the supernatural forces. So you can put three cards down. And then there are. This is very, very cool because we do background extraction, we cover the background, we photograph the cards have them fly and then go back to, to the real cards. That's there's um, there's one which is very cool, which, uh, let me go out of sequence so this goes a little quicker. I love this one a lot. Um, these are the two jokers. Here we can actually recognize the jokers and then uh, have them come alive. Hello. <laughs> How are you doing? Let me see what you got. Oh, oh, pogo stick, watch out. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, no. So, wow. 
So this is kind of a, an, another storytelling routine, which which ends with a with the card which we signed for no reason <laughs> at the beginning. So the card appears and disappears throughout throughout the story, and uh, and it's about magic and cards. That's awesome. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> and then you know, there's always stuff in my studio which is kind of unfinished. This is a. Uh, a neural net learning robot which can interact really close to humans from this Swiss company which gave it to me. So uh, I'm playing with this and kind of creating a routine where he's kind of interacting with me. This is a, a prototype of a, of a super high speed um, uh, prosumer camera. So. Um, um, I'm working together with, the, with another Swiss company which does industrial vision high-speed cameras and we took a little bit of the, of the noise reduction library of the Mars rover and made a noise reduction algorithm for this camera which works really, really well and now this camera outputs like cinema quality so high speed at like a thousand frames. So a poor man's uh, phantom. It's, it's a poor man's phantom and I did, I have on my Vimeo channel, I have a bunch of movies I made with this. It's, Super, super awesome. It's gonna be below ten grand when it finally comes oh, out. That's awesome because the Phantom is like two hundred grand. Right. So did you see? Did you see at uh, the Austin City Limits uh, <laughs> film uh, music festival they blew up a water balloon? Yeah, on it's super awesome. awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's super awesome. There's a, a thing inspired by clean rooms. Uh, I was re I was visiting uh, this uh, this uh, factory where they where they uh, make these computer chips in these absolute clean rooms where everybody wears like yeah. coated and stuff. So. Somebody challenged me and said, well, could you do something in a hermetically sealed environment? So this is kind of something I'm working on right now. It uses multiple cameras to show it from every side. And then I kind of stick my hand and it makes things disappear and reappear and kind of in a, in a sealed environment. So there's always a lot of stuff which is kind of not really ready, but, uh, but in the works. Very cool. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. Well, uh, thanks for, for stopping uh, by. <laughs> well, it's going to be fun seeing you at the web, and uh, thanks for spending a little bit of time showing us some of the technology and magic. Thank you. Um, where do we find you on the web? Uh, MarcoTempest.com, and uh, I tweet a little bit, which will be Virtual Magician. That's okay. My, my Are you on Google Plus yet? I'm on Google Plus. Yeah, and uh, Facebook. And Facebook, but like Google Plus, is, it seems like it's. Uh, I like the, the the quality of discussions going on there. It seems like people say a little more than I'm hungry or I'm I'm landing in Boston or or oh wow this looks cool. So yeah. the 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 engagement is just really really amazing. I think what's happening on Google Plus. So I think we're all gonna eventually. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We well, thank you so much. Thank you. Hopefully you don't make me disappear now. So. <laughs> yeah.